Hey, hey, I have this Ring Chime Pro that I got. This is the V1 of the Ring Chime Pro with the big floppy external antennas. And it basically broke, I guess you'd just say. I noticed it that it was plugged in. Plug was all good, plugged in. Little light didn't come on. Holding the little reset button didn't seem to do anything. So it was broken. So I couldn't really break it any worse than not working. So I opened it up and I think I have gotten it working again, but let me show you what I did. Take out a couple of the screws in the back. This I believe was a pre-release one. So the final ones may be a little different and well here I've cut it. But when you take it apart, you'll notice, oh, I think this will be, this will have a little cover on it like that, or at least mine did. And when you take it apart, you'll notice that it's kind of two main components inside. One side does the power conversion. So it takes in your outlet voltage, which is either, you can see here, somewhere in the 100 to 240 volt range and it outputs something over to the main board. Well, I guessed that it would be five volts because it's a computer thing and most computer things, especially like this, uh, if it only draws 0.3 amps, then you have to imagine that it's probably a pretty low voltage. It can't be very high voltage. Uh, I know those aren't technically always related, but it's a computer thing, so it's probably five volts. I figure that's probably how they did the development stuff and it's got Wi-Fi, so it's probably a five volt little board. I found where you can actually see that it says plus five and ground in there on these little connectors. Anyway, uh, so what I tried to do was check with a multimeter or multimeter, I heard it pronounced. I've always called it multimeter and tried to hook it up and it seemed like it was getting no voltage. So cut these, cut the wires that separated the two halves because it's red and black, it's probably power. Stripped those a little bit, then plugged it into the wall and checked the voltage. Nothing, nothing off of that. I said, well, there's a problem. So then I stripped the other side of the wires and I hooked it up to a USB, a standard USB plug. This is one that you might recognize. Okay, so here's an, just a standard USB charger. This is just some old USB cable I had. I don't even remember what was on the end of it, some connector. Cut that off, strip the wires down, and by trial and error, basically found that these two are the ones that put out five volts. So now you've got this little five volt power supply. So then, so you can see it's hooked up to the little leads right now. Let me just cut kind of that. Go hook that on here. And hey look, it comes on, which it didn't do before. Plug it in, there's no light whatsoever. The Ring Chime Pro takes a couple minutes to boot up. It's got to initialize the Wi-Fi. And the problem that I ran into was that it seemed like it, the adapter I have was not putting out enough power for it to actually boot up. But this one may be putting out enough. It says it only needs 0.3 amps. Oh, yeah, you can see there, it looks like it's rebooting comes up with a solid light, flashes for 10 seconds or so. I found one thing online that basically said it draws 0.6 watts when it's running. The thing is, I think it maybe pulls more when it's booting up. So this is the problem that I ran into, is that it kind of starts up, but it doesn't really get going fully. So you can see it's just sitting here. It's basically boot looping. So I think it gets to some point in the process where it tries to enable some Wi-Fi chip or something. 
and whatever it's doing, I don't know, it draws too much power and basically causes the whole thing to boot loop or reboot because it drew, draw, drew too much power, voltage dropped, wasn't able to, to do it. So the next thing I wanted to try was an old ATX power supply or computer power supply. To get this going, all you have to do is ground out the green, ground the green, and you can hear it come on, and you can see the light comes on, See blinking. If you watch here, you'll see it goes through multiple flashes. That's what I was doing before. Oh, and there it is. See, it stays on. It doesn't cut out. So what this tells me is the power draw on this thing is at least a decent amount when it starts up. So I'm not sure exactly how many amps, but it needs at least for a few seconds, it needs something uh, a little warm, a little higher. And you can actually feel it kind of getting warm in there. So you know it can't be too low. Okay, so let's disconnect this. There you go. So then what I looked for was a simple five volt power supply. I save all these little DC adapters because you never know when they might come in handy. And this was someone from some old router. Well, the power supply was good. And so if we look closely, we can see input voltage 100 to 240, which means it works anywhere. And then five volts output and three amps, 15 watts. So three amps, that seems like that should be enough. So let's try that one out. This is super stupid, so don't, don't do this, but it's broken, so I don't really care. You can see, does it come on? Oh, it came on. Obviously, this is not how you'd want to do it long term with like paper clips <laughs> plugged in. Uh, center pole positive, if you look at the, if you look at the little diagram on the power supply on the AC DC converter you'll see that it's center positive you can see I've got the outside going to negative and the inside going to positive pretty basic but you see it boots up works just fine could even go through the setup process uh, so I was able to go through the setup process get it all hooked up so now I have to decide okay do I want to can I find a little post like this or a little uh, female connector I might have a female connector in my box of stuff uh, Otherwise, you just have to find some sort of 5 volt power supply to use with this. Okay, so I have another cheap multimeter from Harbor Freight, actually. And this one can do not, I don't think it's as good, but it can at least do higher amperage. And I don't know if something else is wrong with my other one or if it just doesn't go that high. But this one will show you amperages. So these are full amperages, so it's doing 0.2 amps, 0.2 amps. So we'll just have to watch if it goes up here in a second when it gets through this thing. Now, its sample speed is not real fast, so it's possible that it's just like a spike and maybe there's some capacitor that's in this converter here that causes it to be able to survive that spike and provide just enough power for just a few seconds. Uh, so there's one, there's one way we can do it. And so, yeah, looks like it only draws about a quarter of an amp, which should be enough for a USB charger to handle it. But maybe it just needs a capacitor to provide the spike voltage. It'd be interesting to maybe solder take one of these capacitors off and maybe try that or just use a larger power supply that can handle the, the draw i'm gonna try another one so here's another old phone charger that i actually cut the end off and put the uh, my own thing on oh it looks like it rebooted 
seems like it does somehow spike up. Oh, oh, maybe it didn't. Looks like this one might actually work. So what I could do is put a little female barrel connector in the back of this, do this, screw that back in, and then just have those connectors on there. I've got some nine volt connectors or whatever, but I'd rather just do things standard so it'd be easy to plug in. If I could find a good phone adapter, you might be able to use that, but really any sort of five volt source that you can hook up to that would be uh, relatively simple to plug in. Basically, all you gotta do is get five volts to it with a decent enough amperage, and then you can have your Ring Chime Pro working again. Okay, so I had a bit of a breakthrough here. Uh, I've got it hooked back up to the standard USB charger with a hacked up cable going into it. And what I've done is I've put a little capacitor in line there. Off this board, I was able to pull a few capacitors. You can see there's spots here for where the capacitors go when they're building out the board. But these capacitors were all, it's hard to show there, 10 microfarad, 400 volt. So those are okay. Uh, I tried putting one of those in line See, the capacitors have negative sides and positive sides, so there's the negative side. And I checked all three that I pulled off of there. One of them didn't seem to actually work. I hooked it up to my multimeter and it said zero. The other ones held it on there and they came out pretty close to what they're rated at, so it was pretty close to 10 microfarads, maybe nine something. But I was looking through my box of random stuff and I found a couple of these. So these are 47 microfarad, 35 volts, since it's just five volt, uh, 35 volts, perfectly sufficient. So the 47 one that I hooked up there, you can see now it got through that whole blinking phase, seems to be running, pulled up the app and it says it's online, all that good stuff. So I do not know what the minimum is. I know that 47 microfarads work for me. So you might be able to do that. What this means is that I could basically take a mini USB wire, chop it up, put this capacitor in line and then wire it up and have that coming out of a hole in the back. And then now I've got a USB powered Ring Chime Pro, which is a whole lot easier to source because I can find something with a USB port on it to power it. And that can work off of pretty much anything. And we know from before it only draws a quarter of an amp, uh, except for the little spike it does kind of when it's switching modes and now the capacitor covers that rewire your Chime Pro, it may just be that the power supply side got busted. And here we go. It's a mini USB cable. So very few devices I have actually use this anymore. And this one is a charge only cable, which will, which should mean it's just easier to figure out which of the cables inside uh, are good. And this is one that uh, can only be used for charging anyway. So I might as well just cut it up. I will do something. I'll cut it like this and that way if I need the connector for something else I can do that. Oh, look at that. See just two cables and I'm assuming red is positive, black is negative, but I will not assume that too much. Let me see if I can There, and there. Let's plug this in and see what we get. Let's see, did they do the wiring right? Yes, five volts. You can see red to red, black to black. Yay. Standard wiring colors. Cool. Okay, so I've done a lot of stuff since that last clip. So, drilled a little hole in there, 
so that I could run the cable through. I suppose you could use this to mount, but it's kind of dangerous because you basically have 120 volts just kind of sitting out here. So really I could probably remove those little clips so that the power isn't being passed through, but probably just won't hook it up like that. You can see here what I did is I brought those wires in, put the capacitor connected across them, and then continued them on to there. So you can see it's red to red, black to black, the negative on the capacitor to the negative side, a little bit of heat shrink around those to try to keep them from shorting out just as far up on there as possible. I'm sure this is a horrible wiring job. I've never seen a wiring job posted on YouTube that somebody wasn't saying it was the worst job they'd ever seen. And how'd you get a YouTube channel? Well, they're free, sign up, I don't care. Um, like and subscribe. If you like seeing completely random stuff, look through my channel and you'll see that <laughs> I have very little consistency in my videos as far as what it is. So, to recap, what we did, open it up, took this little board off, I removed some of the capacitors, checked them, there was one that was bad, so maybe just replacing that one would be sufficient to fix the whole thing and leave it as is. However, I didn't have a capacitor of the right size and didn't really figure that out until you take them all apart. So what I did is replaced it with a five volt power source, which I used a standard USB cable because they put out five volts. But it drew too much amperage for just a split second. So a capacitor in line, this is a 47 microfarad this is 35 volts, but anything over 5 volts should be sufficient. The larger the microfarad, the larger the voltage, well, the larger the microfarad, the larger the capacity of the capacitor, probably the, the more likely it is to work. There still could be uh, issues with this thing dying. I cannot guarantee that it won't. I have only done a little bit of testing. But the idea is now I can plug this in to any USB port around my house, whether that's on one of these chargers or a USB port on a computer or pretty much wherever, because we, we checked it, it drew about a quarter of an amp, which should be enough to be powered off of any USB port, any USB hub, and then it goes back together like this. These screws go in and just to show you that it actually works off of this let me plug it in and let's see what happens oh light came on so that's a good sign then what we're looking for is for it to start blinking which is me which means that it's being set up Still blinking, blinking faster, which means it's to the final stages of setup. I broke the one little antenna pulling it apart, so be careful, but it doesn't matter too much. Oh, and it stayed on. So you can see it did not reboot. It is now good to go. So I just need to tighten these screws down. And that is how to convert a Ring Chime Pro V1 to run off of USB, whether that's because you want to power it off USB or because the little thing inside broke and it no longer works. Either way, it's a nice little solution. Have a good one and stay cool.